Is COD finally dead? This has been the first year in a while that I haven't been that interested in the newest Call of Duty, which is kind of scary to me given the current Call of Duty is Modern Warfare 3. As poetic as it sounds, my first COD was MW3, and potentially my last also might be Modern Warfare 3. I am a big fan of the Modern Warfare games, but brands like Modern Warfare no longer guarantee a certain experience we've come to expect from them, and I just feel like that's so sad. And sure, the OG GMW3 was co-developed by the same two studios, Infinity Ward and Sledgehammer Games. But since then, those two studios have gone through massive changes. Even the lead developers are different, and so are their philosophies around COD. Even the higher-ups seem to have more of a say in each game's art direction and gameplay, more so now than ever before. So even though the new MW3 reboot is co-developed by the same two studios, I don't think their newest installment to this MW trilogy holds up. Rather, I think they've killed the Modern Warfare series. I'm not excited at all for MW4, and upon asking myself why, I think I've discovered something more grim. We have actually entered the first dead era of COD, and that is the root of a new developing problem. Alright, so what is the dead era? Since Vanguard, hmm, maybe even Cold War, eh, -er. no, since Warzone 1, all the way up to the newest MW3 so far, really put emphasis on so far, it feels as though there's been this new marketing strategy in play to suck all of the life out of the last Call of Duty game and put focus on the newest one. I say since Warzone 1 because obviously it got removed. It's no longer playable. It no longer exists under the MW 2019 application. Players never bought it, so I guess Activision has all the rights to take it down if they so please. Well, what about the microtransactions you bought during Warzone 1? <laughs> well, they're now scattered between three full price AAA games, Modern Warfare 2019, Cold War, and Vanguard. Activision did not give two shits. They don't even have custom matches still available. Quite literally, player count factored in, Warzone 1 is the very first fully dead Call of Duty. The next two years we got Cold War and Vanguard, two Call of Duty games that we thought at the time had awful development cycles. Cold War was actually supposed to be co-developed by Sledgehammer Games and Raven Software, but we allegedly know through leaks that they were having internal struggles while working together on Cold War. Their ideas just did not mix well, so they were taken off the project and Treyarch was put in charge. Cold War became Black Ops Cold War. <laughs> Gotta have that Black Ops on the cover to signify that Treyarch handprint, am I right? So w while this COD still is playable, it is also now four generations back, which means it's starting to suffer a little bit more from server issues, but there is still crossplay and it still has a somewhat active player base. I can still find pretty decent connection lobbies in pretty much any game mode under multiplayer. The thing that makes this is a dead multiplayer to me though, was the downgraded quality from Modern Warfare 2019, and of course how undersupported it was during its main life cycle. As a primarily multiplayer fan, I actually had more playtime in zombies. Multiplayer started off kinda weak in the map department with only 8 maps at launch, which is about 3 maps under the standard. The minimum we expect is uh, 11 maps for multiplayer at launch, not including tiny maps like Shipment, Meet, or Nuketown, or, or Doss House. One thing though that I'm gonna give Cold War credit for is having gameplay that felt very good, that is, until Season 1 and onward where the DLC guns and metas were introduced and discovered. The MAC-10 in Season 1 became the best close range gun, period, destroying the longer time to kill and outright beating every other gun in close range, which was later destroyed again by the crossbow secondary DLC gun. Meanwhile, tactical rifles, slow lane holding LMGs, and burst guns in general also took over this game as the meta guns and they destroyed the whole longer time to kill this game was going for. The higher headshot multiple was great and all, but having that multiplier at range really allows these types of guns to effortlessly dominate. All you gotta do is sit at a head glitch and double tap someone in the face. Well, they gotta pepper you with five to six shots. That, combined with no flinch, was a disaster waiting to be taken advantage of. So yes, welcome Cold War to the dead era of COD, with a multiplayer that became soulless over time. Next we have Call of Duty Vanguard. Sledgehammer Games had worked on World War II previously, so they already had a lot of assets at their disposal, which allowed them to get Vanguard out in the first place. Heck, their campaign was rushed and they couldn't make a zombies mode. Treyarch had to give Cold War less support in order to help Sledgehammer Games make a zombies mode for Vanguard. And that zombies mode is the worst this COD franchise has ever seen. One map is just a multiplayer map. Another is a recycle of a recycled map in BO3 Zombies Chronicles. And the last two maps are actually one map, of which one just has a green filter on it. Typically, zombies gets around five or more original maps by the end of its life cycle, but Vanguard only got 
one. Yeah, no one thinks the zombies was good. But since today I'm talking about multiplayer's death, if you hop on Vanguard right now, the servers are absolutely awful, which is kind of insane given this is the third newest COD with crossplay enabled. It's still a relatively new COD, yet every match I enter, I'm getting spikes of server latency and latency variation. I did not get this in the main life cycle. I don't get this in Modern Warfare 3. This is an issue with Vanguard, not my personal connection. And it's not just me who's having issues here either. My friend Lad, who really liked Vanguard, can't find matches easily where he lives either. Apparently it's taken him like over five minutes to find a match, somewhere around there. Personally, I haven't had issues with finding lobbies myself, but every lobby that I do find is plagued with the same leg spike problems. Vanguard, in my opinion, also suffered from some very poor design decisions brought through updates and the horrendous 10 attachments per gun gunsmith system. For the first time, we got an overly complicated gunsmith that really just allows you to turn any gun into any gun. By that, I mean if you want a no recoil long range weapon, you can do that. It is bad though, because if every gun is built to be the same thing, then there's going to be one that rises to the top, and that is the automaton. Other Call of Duty games like Black Ops 3 balance these no recoil long range full auto laser beam weapons out by making their time to kill worse on average. You know, so, so they don't dominate at medium to close range too. The main thing you want at long range is no recoil, so that's what you nerf in return. But the automaton doesn't care. It's time the kill is as good as every other gun in the game. Vanguard's weapon pool severely lacks personality because of it since the guns aren't being built for other playstyles, and this just makes for a very boring experience. Also unfortunately over updates, they ruined the very thing that I thought made Vanguard stand out among other CODs. I'm talking about the grenade problem. Vanguard at launch had fixed it. They allowed you to spawn in with grenades by default, but they were all nerfed to allow skillful gunplay to come out on top. S mines from World War II? They're gone and replaced with a new Vanguard Edition S mine that no longer kills you. This one just acts like a stationary motion detector stun grenade. This S mine and the actual stuns in Vanguard also don't turn you into a stiff old grandpa either. They make you move slowly like you're going through molasses, but you can still defend yourself by looking around fast. In every other COD, this would just make it so you can't move your legs nor your head. So this change was amazing to finally see realized. There are more changes I loved with the Vanguard's grenades, but moving on to the updates. In Season 1, Sledgehammer Games added an overpowered grenade that puts you on fire and they cause a little mini smoke screen. It was so bad that they actually had to add a trophy system to remedy that new flawed grenade. Just for that one. The incendiary grenade also forced two perks to get massive buffs, so that you either took zero fire damage or reduced fire damage. So yeah, you can, you can probably probably see how the new perk Dauntless granting you pure immunity to lingering fire is a massive gameplay detriment. The point of fire in Call of Duty is to block off lanes, and if you're not even going to deal damage, then you're not even going to be notified through hit markers when the enemy is crossing it. They just don't block off lanes anymore. Not to mention this game was supposed to be World War II themed, but they changed it two months in to include the most random shiz you've ever seen in a World War II video game. All of these things really stack up. No matter how little they may seem, it hurts the overall game. The player base is nearly gone, so the servers are getting worse than they should be right now. Updates are hurting the gameplay. The visuals make no sense. The mastery camo looks like five alive. I have no reason to use any other gun than the automaton. That is why this COD is part of the dead era. And after those two CODs, we got this MW2 reboot. I loved this game. It got a real three-year development cycle and Infinity War did a great job with a variety of maps this game had to offer, even though at launch it was missing the beta map museum, which makes for 10 total maps for release, unfortunately. I'm not sure how COD developers can even try scanning a whole museum map in real life without getting permission prior to put it into the game, but uh, that was the reason this map was delayed anyways. Legal problems. But uh, back to the things I enjoyed. I even liked the raids mode. It was so creative and fun to play.
play. That is, once you can find a party of three people to play with. Yeah, they made this a uh, three player only mode. Plus, the Spec Ops was a big improvement upon Modern Warfare 2019's Spec Ops. Ain't that something? <laughs> Clearly improving a sequel from its predecessor. What a concept. I wish all gods did that. Spec Ops itself is not nearly as fun as zombies, but at least I could play it with it without getting a headache. <laughs> God, MDV19 Spec Ops was awful. Their new take on survival was pretty good too. Not the best, but still good. Gun variety was there for multiplayer, and they invented the best camo system to date. Man, this COD, oh, I had a blast. So how, or why does it feel dead to you, Matsuki? Well, guys, it's 2024, so let me take you on a trip all the way over to MW2. I mean, <laughs> Call of Duty. Yeah, they ended up removing MW2 as an application and replacing it with the Call of Duty Hub app. Logically, at first, this does make sense to do. COD games are getting way too big and making an application that constantly uses code from the previous games to save on storage is a good idea. However, here's the big kick in the teeth. If you want to play Modern Warfare 2, you have to go through this awfully designed UI to even find it. They made it this way so that you have to go through the newest Call of Duties, look at them like they're an advertisement. Even if you've bought them already, it feels like, hey, stop scrolling and play me first. But that's not all. Once you find Modern Warfare 2, you have to launch Modern Warfare 2 within the already launched Call of Duty app. I have a PS5, something that can load this COD app and get into an MW3 match within 23 seconds. That's what it's like for most standalone CODs on the PS5, if not less time. But after that 23 seconds to get into MW2, I have to scroll to MW2, click on it, wait another 40 seconds so I can get an update requires restart screen. I have to click OK on that too, and then I gotta wait another 22 seconds. In total, if I want to play MW2 after playing Modern Warfare 3, I gotta wait 1 minute and 25 seconds compared to the alternative 23 seconds. Hi, a uh, quick little correction here. While the data was right, this was prior to Season 2, and after Season 2, they did change things up uh, a little bit. The initial launch up for Modern Warfare 2 now took two additional minutes, <laughs> but after that first initial launch, there's no, like, update requires restart, and it only takes 40 seconds, so I guess that's a slight improvement. That's like a 40 second improvement overall, but still, it takes 40 seconds, so yeah. Like, let's continue the rest of the video with that knowledge in mind. Maybe it sounds like I'm complaining a lot about nothing, but when you have a new console and every game is playable within a snap, then you just have MW2 and it takes four times as long? That's deterring me and a lot of other people from playing the game. Again, that's on top of being advertised to along the way. Dude, we thought MW 2019, Cold War, and Vanguard menus were getting stale, but they at least had the games and modes easily accessible. Warzone was also on MW19, so you just loaded that game at first. No extra wait time. So yeah, they made a pretty fun and complete COD super annoying to access in favor of promoting MW3 and Warzone 3 instead. And I think MW2 servers are really going to start suffering from this in the near future too. Modern Warfare 2 is in the dead era because these developers have designed this COD hub in a way that makes swapping between games even more of a hassle than loading up into a different COD. Me personally, I don't have an issue with downloading a PS4 version of a COD onto my extended storage, then keeping the PS5 versions I love on the console itself. PS5 versions take up more storage, so that's why you can't have all of them on the PS5 itself. That's why I download the PS4 versions on a separate storage. They're smaller, and this allows me to still play them without re-downloading them with my crappy internet. So when it comes to MW2, they've created a new problem to fix. Something that I've already solved for myself. <laughs> but that's not all for Modern Warfare 2. No, 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 no. They don't just stop there. They didn't update the game like Vanguard and Cold War to ruin its gameplay per se, outside of the awful first season. Uh, no. They decided it would be a good idea to slowly re-release in the same Call of Duty application, Modern Warfare 2's maps into Modern Warfare 3. For free. Basically rendering Modern Warfare 2 as the older version of MW3. It's funny as well because they aren't bringing the Modern Warfare 3 maps back into MW2, even for those that bought both games. So only MW2 maps are going into MW3. And despite these games being on the same app, they stopped allowing the Battle Pass to transfer back into MW2. So while MW3 continues to get new Battle Pass content, content throughout the year, if you prefer playing MW2, you will completely miss out. Fun fact, we 
do know that this is something they have already programmed into the game prior to Season 1. During MW3 Season 0, we were able to swap between MW2 and MW3 to complete the same battle pass in both games. I know this because MW3 wasn't showing us the days left of Season 0, we had to swap back over to MW2's battle pass of the same season to see what days were left. So the conclusion that I draw from this is that when we only get maps going forward into MW3, only skins going forward into MW3, only new camos going forward into MW3, they really weren't kidding about the carry forward system, that's the only way it goes. If a COD is older, it is now outdated to the point it gets no more quality of life content. Remember back when MW19 got Elrab Airbase and Kill House during Black Ops Cold War's Season 2? Or how about Black Ops Cold War when we got Jungle during Vanguard's Season 3? Yeah, I, I don't think we'll ever see those again after what happened to Modern Warfare 2's alleged Year 2 content. With the Call of Duty hub, extra maps are just going forward into the next game. There's also no reason a COD like MW2 should have a season like its first one after three years of development. Shipment and Shoot House? Really? Two tiny maps from both Modern Warfare 2019. Completely forget about staple maps like Nuketown and Terminal for each studio. Now we're getting a bunch of maps recycled from every single year. Do you know why Modern Warfare 2's Season 2 also sucked? Dome was the only map they had planned to add to Season 2. Again, Museum was a beta map planned for launch, but they delayed it. And even though Himmelmat Expo came out during Season 2 as well, it was not planned for that season. It, it, got, it got moved forward because of the backlash. And again, they only planned to add Dome. We already had Dome in the original COD MW3, Ghosts twice, Infinite Warfare, Vanguard, and now again in the MW2 reboot. Dome wasn't even in the OG MW2, but the reason they added it to the reboot is most likely because they recycled the map from the previous year's COD Vanguard. Because Vanguard added Dome to the newest COD engine. From there, it's just give the map a new visual aesthetic. And like, we just had a three month break from that map and they recycled it again. Obviously, there's going to be more backlash. They also had to know MW2's Year 2 content was getting pulled, so they had to make some maps quickly to fill in what work was being stolen from them. Modern Warfare 2 had a three year dev cycle unlike Cold War in Vanguard, so there is no excuse to be releasing what MW2 released that year. Especially when the name of the game is MW2. Like, you're gonna give us MW2 maps with the game that has that title. You don't just show them off a year earlier either, hinting at them coming to multiplayer later, then just scummily holding them back from the game's multiplayer to re-release them the next year as a new game itself, when clear as day, it was meant to be future DLC content. There is way too much lined up for it not to be DLC content. But yeah, a rant aside, I'm sure you could tell I wasn't happy with this content being withheld from MW2. The point is, MW2 was not only lacking some content, it's not only more annoying to launch the game through the COD app, it also got completely overshadowed by MW3. Like seriously, why buy MW2? when you can just get the exact same maps, which are like the main course experience in MW3, along with all of MW3's new maps. I just don't see much of a reason people are going to flock over to MW2 post life cycle when MW3 is going to include the OG MW2 maps, the ones that people bought the MW2 remake for, and then also when MW3 is re-releasing all of MW2's content again for free. No map changes are being made, it's the same aesthetics, layout, and everything, and it's being drip fed right now as if it takes a lot of work to bring them over. But I find that hard to believe this takes that much time to transfer between games, DLC games, as I think it would be incredibly stupid of developers to make a Call of Duty hub that can't transfer maps and files between games at least somewhat easily. What was the point in the Call of Duty hub if you cannot do this? Which brings us to the current COD, paving the way for more dead games. The Imposter, MW3, or as the real name stands, Call of Duty is ruining all future games by making the past ones obsolete. Modern Warfare 2 is the first of the COD hub era. Modern Warfare 3 will be the next on the chopping block once 2024's Treyarch game comes out. I can honestly see all the pieces sliding together already. Think about DMZ and its relation to MWZ. Do you remember the disappointment when it was announced DMZ will no longer receive any more updates throughout MW3? I think MW 
Zombies is going the exact same route as DMZ. Once 2024's COD rolls around, Treyarch are saying goodbye to MW Zombies and they're gonna hop on the Gulf War Zombies wagon. I doubt it's gonna be Treyarch's decision to do so, but it's part of the current Activision plan or the Microsoft plan. Who knows at this point? So this dead era of COD is not over. It will continue. So I'd like to know your guys' thoughts about this dead era as well in the comments below. Do you think it started with Warzone 1 like I do? Or do you think it's starting now with MW2 and this Call of Duty hub? I could see an argument for both. I think Activision has a plan to make their old games less appealing and make their new ones stand out like the Holy Grail. You could probably say that they've been fulfilling this goal through the removal of popular anti-cheat launchers for old CODs too. I was really looking forward to the boy clans, you know, so I could play BO3 on private servers without getting doxxed and whatnot. That would have been nice, but Activision took that project down with a cease and desist letter. There goes that dream. But I'll stick around and I'll see you in the next one. Drop a comment, like, and subscribe, and peace out, homies.